punishment in return, reciprocation, or they can forgive you. And in the Quran, it encourages us to forgive. And the Prophet Muhammad said, in such cases, it is better that you forgive each other. And um, the, the, the Prophet Muhammad, وسلم, I mean, imagine this, encouraging forgiveness. So it's not like, oh, you commit murder, right, the Sharia wants to kill you for murder. No, it actually encourages people to forgive each other and alleviate the punishment for the, the Sharia. The, the, the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said, for, for, forgive the hudud, forgive the offenses, uh, uh, the capital crimes amongst you. Um, but because if, if a case should reach me, then I have to implement punishment. So a, a punishment is certain, he says. So he's telling the Muslims, um, forgive each other these, these offenses you've done against, even, even murder, basically. Forgive each other. Because if you want it, if you bring it to me, I have to punish. If you bring it to me for punishment, then I have to punish. So he's, telling, he's encouraging Muslims to forgive each other these crimes. So does the Sharia seem bloodthirsty? Does the Sharia seem without compassion? In this system, you can't be forgiven for murder. It doesn't matter who, it doesn't matter who, you know, forgives you. Even if the family of that person forgives you, if everyone, you know, forgives you, if, if, if you're like a, a, a wonderful TV star and so on. I was about to say Jimmy Savile, but then I realized, no, bad, bad example. Right? It doesn't matter how well liked you are, uh, you basically will be punished. But in Islam, there is, there is forgiveness. And not only that, not only all that, not only is it that the witnesses required are, are very high, not only is it encouraged to forgive, not only is it encouraged to hide your sins if you, if you commit a sin which doesn't harm anyone, obviously, which is not murder, obviously, you're a personal, a personal sin. But not only this, um, the Prophet Muhammad told Muslims to actively find a way to um, negate um, hudud cases, capital punishment cases, or, and, and, and corporal punishment cases too. So the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said that ward off the hudud punishments from the Muslims as much as you can if there is any possible way for the accused to let him go, uh, you know, then let him go. For a judge to err is, in pardoning is better than him erring in punishment. Err on the side of caution, err on the side of forgiveness, err on the side of letting the case drop. In fact, it says ward off the punishments from, uh, as much as you can. We have to actively find a loophole or some kind of defect or doubt to actually uh, negate the punishment. That's what the Prophet Muhammad is telling Muslims to do, who, who obviously Muslims are the ones who are implementing the Sharia. So does the Sharia system seem like an inhumane, barbaric, bloodthirsty system that wants blood for, for, for dropping even a crumb? Uh, as, the, as is depicted on the media, is that's not the case. There's more forgiveness in this system than any other system on earth. You can actually be forgiven for murder in, in, in that system. So this is the purpose of the penal system in Islam. It is to deter public acts of corruption, bad examples, and open temptations. The Sharia is not for regulating the piety of people in the private sphere. That is between them and God. The penal system in Islam uh, only has a handful, a handful of punishments which are capital offenses. So basically, uh, Islam is not here to make you a, a, a good Muslim in the privacy of your own home. You know, whether you actually are a bad person in, uh, and, uh, in, in, you know, to, in left to your own devices or not, it, it can't make you be a good person. What it will do is if you want to be a good person, if you want to be uh, a person who, do, who is virtuous, who is not selfish, who doesn't compete against other people and undermine other people, only thinks of yourself or, or is succ succumb to various temptations, then Sharia will help you in the public, in your, in the public for, uh, by protecting you from these temptations and allowing you, giving you your space to be the good person you've always wanted to be. But if you're, if you're hell-bent, uh, uh, literally, if you're hell-bent on being a bad person, uh, then the Sharia is not here, will not force you to be a good person. And, and in the privacy of your own home, if you want to drink alcohol and entertain women of ill repute, then you know, do so. And obviously on their judgment, you'll have to answer for those, for those things. But the Sharia is not here to make you a, a good person. The Sharia is here to help those who want to be good, but are just weak humans. We're all weak humans. I'm weak human. So uh, this is what the Sharia is, is here to do in that sense. And the aims of the Sharia penal system and the Sharia itself is the protection of property, which is why we have punishment of theft, the protection of life, which is why you have the punishment for murder, and the protection for, of the institution of marriage and the family, which is why in the Sharia it outlaws adultery and it outlaws fornication. It's not because the Sharia is just, is just being a buzzkill or a party pooper. It's because um, it's trying to protect the family. If you uh, are with your wife and you don't like your wife anymore uh, for some unknown re whatever reason, even a trivial reason, and somehow you, 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 don't, you, want, you want to marry someone, you want to be with someone else, uh, don't cheat on your wife. Don't, don't uh, hurt her like that. 
um, amicably arrange a divorce with her and then get married to the person you want. Don't cheat on that person because being cheated on hurts. It hurts more than being, you know, than being, being physically hurt or being physically beaten. You know, in, in the West, they say the only, the only real pain is obviously the physical, if you physically harm someone, but there's also emotional pain. Now, I know the British law system, which is very pragmatic, understands there is actually aspects of emotional hurt as well, but according to liberal theory, you don't take that into, into consideration. You, can, you only consider physical harm, which is the first formulation of liberal theory in the Renaissance. written questions. questions. Um, and I also take questions from the audience as well. Um, okay, I first I'll take a question from the audience. Does anyone have a question uh, they'd like to ask? on any of the points I've mentioned or something I haven't mentioned, and so on. Uh, you, sir? Okay. Yeah, that's a good question. I, I get asked that a lot, surprisingly. Um, very simple. Uh, if, you look at, if you look in the Quran, Surah 4, Ayah 88, or chapter, um, verse 88, and it explains uh, this concept. Basically, there was, um, a, it's not really apostasy. Um, I think it's been mistranslated. Or maybe it's, it's uh, apostasy according to the medieval conception of apostasy. But apostasy was actually treason against society. It wasn't actually just changing your belief. Uh, but in today's world, we view it as just changing your belief and then you are executed. Rather, it should be translated as a punishment for treason against society. And I explain. Uh, there, was, uh, there was a man who, who, uh, who became Muslim and he, and he took an oath. He was a Bedouin guy. And then um, a few days later, he was a bit feverish and he came to the Prophet Muhammad and he said, I, you know, I want, to, I want you to, to take back my oath for Islam. To, to, I, I want to leave, basically. He wants to, he wants to leave Islam. I want to you know, take it back from me. And the Prophet Muhammad you know, uh, you know, wouldn't take his oath from them and, and uh, wouldn't take back his oath. So did the Prophet Muhammad say, all right, you know, you know guys, kill, you know, kill this man or execute this man or capture this man and kill him and so on and so forth? No. Uh, he just left. He just literally just left, left Medina, left, which was where the Muslims were, were, were based, the, the, the first Islamic state. Uh, there's not a case where basically a man, uh, two, uh, two Byzantine Romans, Roman merchants, or Christian Roman, uh, merchants, came to Medina, which was, again, the early Islamic state at the time of the Prophet Muhammad. So, so, and I'll use the Prophet Muhammad's example as the basis for Sharia, because he is the basis, for, uh, for, for obviously, for um, emulation you know, for as a Muslim. And uh, these two merchants spoke to one uh, Muslim guy and convinced, converted him to Christianity. And then they took, they took him... Uh, not against his will, of course, but they, they took him back with them to go back to where they came in Syria, uh, which was under Roman, Byzantine Roman rule. When the father of that guy heard about this, he rushed to the Prophet Muhammad Sassam, and said, please, you know, they're taking my son away, you know, like, uh, you know, help me catch them and, and bring him back. And the, the Prophet Muhammad Sassam, um, no, so just, just said they, they should go, go on their way, not, not to be intercepted or, or taken back. And this is where... Uh, it was, uh, according to one tafsir, it was revealed there is no compulsion in religion. You can't compel people. And so this is the case. And in these situations with the Bedouin guy and with that, that person who converted to Christianity, there was no treason involved. There was no, they weren't saying, right, you know, now I'm a Christian, I'm going to undermine the Muslim society and, and help the enemies uh, to invade and so on and so forth. Which we saw there were cases where basically people tried to help um, enemies who wanted to wipe out the Muslims uh, to, uh, you know, uh, find some way, uh, way to basically uh, uh, destroy Muslims and kill Muslims and so on and so forth. Yeah, and these people were basically, were, were committed treason and these people were, were, were punished for it. But just, just wanting to leave I mean, if you want to leave Islam and you say, right, I'm, I say I don't believe in Islam anymore, I'm off. No one punishes this person. And for evidence of this, the, the, you know, I would suggest you read Surah 4, Ayah 88, where it explains. And it, it, what it says is that if a person basically, you know, uh, he, he leaves Islam and he, 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 he just seeks refuge with people who you have a treaty with. And these people don't want to fight you. These people don't want to actually attack or physically you know, have battle with you. Uh, then um, leave them be. You know, and so that's the basis, uh, and it's been misconstrued by the media. It's been misconstrued, uh, and so. And when when they uh, you see in, you see basically uh, in these cases in in various Muslim countries. Again, Muslim countries, 
and Sharia are two different things. Uh, but you see in case of Muslim, uh, in Muslim countries where um, some vigilante group has captured this guy who's, who's, um, who's, be, who's uh, want to leave Islam. These are just vigilantes. I mean, there are vigilantes in this country that will uh, attack people, um, you know, accusing them of uh, a person. There's one case of a woman who was um, a pediatrician, but in, 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 during this, this, which is a person that obviously deals with children, but because...